Today I'm at Spring Meadow Nursery, the home of the Proven Winners Color Choice Shrubs. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings and it is late September and we're going to take a walk through these trial gardens and check out some of the interesting phenomenons that some of these shrubs are doing here late in the summer. It's been an exceptionally hot summer here in West Michigan where he's zone 6A and there's many surprises that I've seen just walking through the property here and I wanted to share them for you with you. So let's go ahead and take a walk through the gardens. We're gonna start off with the Let's Dance Can Do Hydrangeas. These are looking spectacular for the end of September. So many flowers, so many buds, and just a beautiful looking plant. Let's Dance Can Do is hardy in zones four to nine. Let's Dance Can Do is not only known for it, its wonderful hardiness, but also for its quick ability to put on a rebloom. So not only are you going to have reliable flowers in the spring, you're going to quickly see additional flowers once those original flowers start to fade because it's going to put on just spectacular new regrowth. So when these were first blooming, I saw them earlier on the summer in June, this hedgerow was about two and a half, maybe three foot tall. And that's when the first cycle of flowers um, were blooming. You can see here down low the spent blooms, how they were definitely lower here on the plant. As I mentioned, it's very quick to rebloom, and you can see all of these beautiful flower spikes that it sent up with these additional blooms. It's about four foot tall now, so it started off at about two and a half or so, and these reblooms or the additional growth put on these flower spikes up to about four, four and a half foot tall, and it is just gorgeous. So not only are we seeing all this beautiful color, we're seeing still a ton of buds on this plant. Will these buds all turn to blooms? That's yet to be determined because realistically, we're gonna be getting our first frost here at any point in West Michigan. So there's a chance that these buds will not ever bloom. But for those of you who are in warmer climates and have a longer season, just look at that. So much potential yet on this plant. These are planted in a full sun location, although they can handle some part shade as well. If you are in the south, we do recommend making sure that you keep them well watered if you are planting them in any amount of sun. And even for the, us in the north here, this is a plant that we do tend to water daily just to keep it from getting wilty from the too much sun. But gorgeous flowers, big, beautiful blooms. Quick Fire Fab is also putting on a beautiful surprise fall display of color. Quick Fire Fab is hardy in zones three to eight and is one of the earliest of the panicle hydrangeas to start blooming. It's got gorgeous color. You can see the beautiful magenta tones here. But what we're seeing here in the garden is a bunch of rebloom going on. So these white flowers are daring to stand out in the crowd. And we're seeing that all the way up and down this hedge. Now, this might be because we've had an abnormally warm fall here in West Michigan, but this is something that certainly could occur with this rebloom. The rebloom is coming off of some new growth that the plant has put on. So here's an example of a few buds on this plant here. And if we look down lower, some of this new growth here is putting on the flowers. Quick Fire Fab does bloom off of the new season's growth, so very reliable. It can be trimmed in the fall after it's done blooming, or you can trim it in early spring, and you will still have beautiful flowers throughout the summer. So definitely this is a unique thing we're seeing here on the Quick Fire Fab this fall are these beautiful, crisp, clean white flowers that are coming off the new growth. Quick Fire Fab can get six to eight foot tall when it's mature. Here in this planting, it's about four foot tall right now. Um, so certainly these plants are not at their mature state yet and have quite a ways to go. But making a beautiful hedge here along the parking lot at Spring Meadow and fantastic color for this late fall season. For you warm zone gardeners, here's a great one for you. This is a Caryopteris Beyond Pinked. This is a beautiful plant that is excellent for pollinators, especially late in the season. Beyond Pinked is hardy in zones 7B to 9 and has a beautiful bubblegum pink flowers. Deer resistant, which is wonderful for those of you who are struggling with deer in your garden. It has beautiful clusters of pink blooms. It just started to warm up a little bit here and the honeybees have woken up and are definitely taking in all the beauty of these flowers. It gets about two to two and a half foot tall and wide, so it creates a nice mounding habit. You can see here they used it as kind of a border around their sign, which gives a really 
cool look here at Spring Meadow Nursery. And I'm just loving all of the activity I'm seeing with the honeybees. It's always important to add those late summer bloomers into the garden for those pollinators who are still busy at it. And this is just the perfect plant for that. Today we're going to take a walk through the trial gardens here at Spring Meadow Nursery. And you are in for a treat today. We are going to look for fall color in the form of shrubs. So either flowering shrubs or shrubs that have beautiful fall foliage. And just looking around this garden so far, there is a lot to look at with a lot of beauty all around. So let's go ahead and take a walk through the garden. The first plant we're looking at is a shrub that has actually been shaped into tree form. And this is a Hepticodium. Hepticodium are known for four seasons of color. Name also might be familiar to you as Seven Sunflower. So right now, it is in its brack stage. So we're seeing beautiful rosy pink bracts all over this plant. Just a couple weeks ago, there was beautiful white flowers. And that's the neat thing with this plant is when those flowers are done and it faded, from a distance, these bracts also look like flowers. In the fall, this will get fantastic fall foliage color with shades of orange and red. And then in the winter, the Seven Suns flower has awesome peeling bark. And this has been trimmed up a little bit extra, so we are really able to enjoy and see the peeling bark on this plant. This is hardy in zones five to nine and can get 10 to 15 foot tall. So that is why I think it's really cool to trim this into a tree form. That way you can really enjoy all of the bark that's peeling, where if you leave it just as a shrub, you're not gonna really be able to see and enjoy all this peeling bark. It's excellent for the pollinators. When those white flowers were on here earlier this season, the honeybees were just going wild. So if you have a spot in your garden that can hold something that can get a little bit bigger, definitely this Temple of Bloom has beautiful form and beautiful texture that it adds into the landscape space. Here we have a red twig dogwood, also known as a cornice, and this is Sergeant Pepper. So the thing I like about cornice or the red twig dogwood is in the winter, it's got fantastic red twigs, as the name implies, that look really cool in my winter porch pots. The thing I like here about Sergeant Pepper though, is even before these flowers have started to fizzle and fade in the fall, they have fantastic color. So a lot of your dogwoods are just gonna be plain green leaves where Sergeant Pepper has the nice kind of a, kind of a silvery green leaf with beautiful pink or kind of a blushy pink edging on it. So it gives this plant interest not only in the winter with those beautiful red twigs, but with the pink edging on the leaves as well. Nice summer color as well. So Sergeant Pepper is hardy in zones three to seven. It gets four to six foot tall and six to eight foot wide. So a plant you're gonna wanna make sure you leave again, plenty of room in your garden for because it does get substantial in size. Now we do recommend with red twig dogwoods that you trim them back every two to three years to continue to get those bright red twigs. If you don't trim them, over time the twigs will turn brown. It's that fresh new growth that presents with the vibrant redness in the color. Cornus are deer resistant and also they do get some flowers on them earlier in the season. So they are a nice shrub for pollinators as well. This is a pretty mature specimen here in the garden. So this way you can see what it would look like if you let it grow to its mature height. When looking for fall color, we often think of the foliage, which is really what fall color is, especially here in West Michigan, would be as the leaves start to change to their reds and oranges and yellow. Well, here's an excellent plant. This is the Barberry Orange Pillar, which just always is putting on a colorful show. It's hardy in zones four to eight. It gets three to four foot tall and one and a half to three foot wide. It's deer resistant. They do have a little bit of thorns in them. Um, so that is what helps to tear the deer. But the more sun they get in the summer, they're just vibrant shades of orange. You're seeing a little green on the underside with the orange on the top. The more sun they get, the more vibrant the coloration um, will appear. This is part of our deer proof line because let's face it, anything with thorns typically is gonna be a plant that the deer, the deer are gonna stay away from. 
They have this planted here as a beautiful border or hedge on the edge of this garden. And it's just, it's looking fantastic, especially with all those gorgeous hydrangeas in the background. We're looking to add some fantastic evergreens to the garden. Here's a grouping of Montana moss juniper. Montana moss is hardy in zones four to nine and gets two to four foot tall, and it can get up to five foot wide. So here's this grouping of three in the garden. And I would say these are getting close to their mature size to kind of give you a good idea of what they would look like in the garden. They're a cool blue compact spreading juniper with soft, attractive moss-like foliage. An easy way to add evergreen color into your mix. With the added bonus of being drought tolerant and deer resistant, Montana moss is really a very easy shrub to grow and to add into your gardens. We love plants with interesting architectural interest, and this evergreen takes skinny to the max with its sword-like silhouette. Use it to make an exclamation point in the garden design or fit it into narrow garden beds. Arborvitae staying gets three to eight foot tall, one to one and a half foot wide. You heard that right. That is super narrow. At maturity, it does get 15 to 20 foot tall. And you can see these guys here, not quite mature by any means, but even so, standing at about four to five foot tall right now, you can definitely see that they have an excellent narrow habit. And I'm looking to add a few of these in my garden because I just love how they don't take up a lot of room but adds so much interest. And this is gonna be great even for the winter when everything else has lost its leaves. These beautiful Arborvitae Sting are gonna make a very cool statement in my winter garden. Pinky Winky Prime, everything you loved about the original Pinky Winky, but so much more. Larger, fuller flowers, better, richer magenta pink coloration. Pinky Winky Prime can get up to nine foot tall. So this is a very large growing hydrangea. It's hardy in zones three to eight and makes excellent cut flowers. Pinky Winky is known for its more lace cap appearance with the flower form, which is what we are seeing here. When these flowers first emerged, they emerged as beautiful white blooms. And then as they aged or transitioned, they transitioned into this gorgeous magenta color you're seeing here today. So midsummer, you're gonna have white with some pink blooms, kind of that cool bicolor look going on. And then as they turn to that beautiful fall color, you're just getting very impressive shades of pink. The original Pinky Winky was great, but definitely I am seeing much improvement over flower color and even habit of the plant here with the Pinky Winky Prime. Every time I'm here in the gardens and I see this Kinsley Ghost Honeysuckle, it never disappoints. Let's go in and take a closer look here at the plant. So earlier this summer, it was just starting to flower up. And what you're seeing right now with those round discs, those are the flowers of this particular honeysuckle. This is hardy in zones four to eight and gets about five foot wide and up to 12 foot tall, depending on the size of the trellis that you're growing it on. It's a stunning ornamental honeysuckle. And let's actually, let's look at these berries too, because I think those berries have some really unique added interest. I just love how it kind of sways in the breeze. Honeysuckle are great for adding kind of vertical height and interest. This certainly will do that, uh, more so with the foliage form than with flowers, but I think foliage does play a very important role in the garden because of the textures that it adds in. Kinsley's Ghost is deer resistant, so if you have deer in your garden, this should not be a plant that will be affected by the deer. Also, it does attract hummingbirds, butterflies, and other pollinators with the flowers that do appear earlier on in the season. Right now I'm loving kind of that silvery sheen that's over top of the green foliage. That silver kind of gives it also just a little bit of depth and an interesting look here in the garden. So we have added a few Kensley Ghosts out into our gardens. So I'm excited to watch them grow and get as beautiful as what we're seeing here in the trial gardens. What a gorgeous plant. Those of you that have held on to the end of the video, oh, you're gonna be glad you did. This is a fantastic little space in this garden that just showcases so many beautiful hydrangeas. And the color of the hydrangeas this time of year is fantastic. Let's go ahead and take a look at what is planted here in this garden. First off, 
as we will begin to enter the garden. This is the Let's Dance Ariba hydrangeas. So Let's Dance Ariba is uh, very reliable here in this zone six garden. And it starts off with its early season blooms off of the previous season's growth. And then it continues to put on new blooms throughout the summer on the new growth. You can see here in this garden, there's a nice mix of pink and blue going on. So I can't say for certain if they treat the soil or not, but I would have to almost guess that the soil perhaps is treated to get some of this blue or purple coloration going on. Let's take a closer look here at the Ariba blooms. Nice big blooms. And you can see the, there's a lot of new blooms coming out here as well. It's end of September, as we've mentioned earlier. and that's a lot of blooms. This plant just continues to put on flowers. Now, I don't know if we'll get to see these actual buds turn into blooms because it is so late in the season, but just the fact that they're there and it could be a possibility is wonderful. So that goes to show for those of you that have warmer climates, you can get your Ariba blooming for a very long time in your garden. This here is, I would say, more of a full sun garden, although I'm sure there are times of day where we are also seeing some pokes of shade. Next, as we walk inside this garden, you'll notice there is a circle here we're gonna go around. This is the Let's Dance Sky View, right up front and center here. This is more of a compact uh, hydrangea, part of the big leaf family. There's also a little bit of the mountain um, hydrangea parentage in here as well. And just look at those blooms. That red you're seeing, those are actually the spent blooms, the old blooms. But look how well it's held on to its color. Also, we're seeing some new growth going on with some more pink and purple shades. As we walk around, we're going to see a little bit of a transition of color. And again, this could be because of different uh, treatments that they put in the soil. But it could also just be that the soil has um, different chemistry in it along the circle but look at those beautiful gorgeous blue blooms so sky view is known for its more bluish or purple toned blooms but depending on your soil type they may appear more pink for you in your garden but that is excellent excellent rebloom this late in the season and even with those spent flowers you can see just how fantastic the flower coverage was when these first started off blooming Behind them are panicle hydrangeas. These are the little lime punch hydrangeas. And again, gorgeous, gorgeous magenta blooms. There's one there that is uh, kind of, I don't want to say a rebloom, but if little lime punch puts on some late season growth, you might see some white flowers poke through amongst the magenta ones. This is a panicle hydrangea, which blooms off of the new growth. So if these get trimmed in the late fall or early spring, they will still reliably bloom for you during the summer. And I am loving this hedge of the little lime punch hydrangeas. Let's just take a walk and check out the beauty here in this space. So it's the Let's Dance Sky View and a little lime punch hydrangeas. As we go to the inner circle here, we have the Let's Dance Can Do. Let's Dance Can Do is a big leaf hydrangea with some of that mountain hydrangea parentage in it. And man, beautiful color, beautiful rebloom. I just look at this, look at this blue. That is crazy, so stunning. This has been a treat for me to see this fall because I've never been here this late in the season and just seen all of this gorgeous color that we're seeing today. So I hope you enjoyed this tour through the garden today. I know I sure have. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments about any of the plants you've seen in today's video, please feel free to leave it below in the comments. We are in a trial garden, so there may be some plants I am not able to talk about, um, but I will do my best to tell you about those that we can. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.